There is the recipe for my favourite pie, chicken and gravy pie. It's St George's Day tomorrow. Let's get very English, shall we? This video will be very long if I showed you the whole process, so I will share links to how to prepare a chicken and how to make a chicken stock. Here basically, I'm just showing you, I've skipped through most of it, but if you do buy some chicken breasts and legs, this will cover that part of it. So I'm removing the skin and any joints there, that's the uh, part of the wing that's coming off, that's gonna go in the stock pots any little bits of cartilage or sinew, get rid of that as well. The legs, again, just tear the skin off. And feel free just to buy it already diced up chicken meat if you like, and buy a chicken stock. If you're gonna buy chicken stock for this one, I wouldn't use a stock cube. I would actually buy one of the more fancy ones already in liquid form. It's a bit better quality, less salty as well. So with the thighs, both legs have been separated into thighs and drumsticks. That's all skin, that's going in the bin, of no use to you on this one. I want to debone now the thighs, so I'm just running my knife either side of the thigh bone. Get it underneath. Now when you've separated all of these bits of bones, you're also going to just go through, touch them all with your fingers to feel for any bits of gristle or cartilage that's left in there that will spoil the eating experience of eating your lovely chicken and pie if, you, um, if you've got some gristle in there. So you take your time with this bit. And the reason why I love this pie so much, I don't know what it is exactly, I can't put my finger on it. Whenever I come back from my holidays, no matter if it's in the middle of July or August or something like that, and I've just been in Spain or Portugal, I have to have chicken and gravy pie with mashed potatoes. I don't know what it is. Some people it's a cup of tea and Marmite on toast. For me it's chicken pie. What well, I've just shown to you there is the end of the tendons. Get them off. Anything you think won't be nice to eat, Get it off. And like so. So there's now no more bone or gristle. Dice this up. So I'm going to keep the leg meat and the breast meat sort of separate. I decided to cut up the leg pieces a little bit smaller. Chicken legs take longer to cook than breast. So in my mind, I'm thinking that makes sense much more flavor in the leg though by all means just do this with breast but it won't be the same so that was the fillet from the breast and then I'm going to cut the rest of it into strips a nice large pieces the pastry short pastry plain flour I've had that in the fridge to chill down and then the butter which I diced and then had back in the fridge as well and that's the reason why I'm using a food processor for this pastry you can by all means just use a bowl in your fingers but your fingers have got warmth I think the best results for a short pastry a really good crumbly one is that you've done everything cold I give that about that had about 30 seconds I just skipped forwards I'll have a look it's almost there really. You're looking for a sort of a breadcrumb look. It's been very warm lately and you may notice some legs in the background. Some of them were mine and some of them were my ladies. You'll have to guess whose is whose.
but shorts are on because it's been one of the warmest Easter holidays I can remember. It's been absolutely lovely. I've got a little bit of a tan and everything. Okay, so that gave about another 30 seconds and then added the egg and gave that about 30 seconds. Now onto the board. We've got to get some water into this, but I'm going to go easy. If you put too much water in, the worst thing that's going to happen is you'll have a slightly wet dough and you'll have to use a lot more flour when you roll it out. So it's not the end of the world. And again, I'm going to try not to work this out too much. I've probably ended up putting in a couple of tablespoons of water there, and that's cold water. And I'm just going to show you here, you see how it is actually coming together as a pastry? So it's pretty much done. The dough is ready, but it wants to relax in the fridge. So take a nice big pot, a little bit of olive oil in there and sweat these vegetables. I'm going to cook them for a few minutes, maybe take them a little bit further than sweating if they get a little bit of colour, a bit golden brown on the edges, that's absolutely fine. Quite a generous amount of salt at this stage, but if you are going to use a stock cube later on, don't put very much in there at all. But a little bit of salt helps to draw out the moisture from the vegetables, it will help them cook down a bit quicker. It's all very scientific, goes over my head. So I've decided not to go the bouquet garni route, but my last video I did, when I when I chucked in big sprigs of herbs, I was ending up picking out all these bits of wood. So the rosemary and the thyme, I picked it, and then I put the knife through it for a while to make it into really small pieces, so you wouldn't even notice when you're eating it. A couple of bay leaves, but you can pull those out later on. And the parsley I had in this recipe, I chopped that and I put it in at the last minute, so it's got a nice bit of fresh colour through it. There you go, that's had a few minutes. Well on the way to being cooked. It's time to try to get a little bit of colour into the chicken. So I've got a very hot frying pan, if you excuse me. That is an old and battered but very reliable heavy based frying pan. It doesn't look good. But when I've got a job like this to do, it is the tool I need. Very good pan. I've got the leg pieces going in first. A thorough seasoning as usual. And I don't want to mess around with it too much. Obviously it needed to be a little bit better, so some butter went in. And I thought that also might help to get the colour going. And that colouring isn't necessarily for presentation, it's more for flavour. So you don't need to clean your pan in between, I just pop the chicken breast meat in. You didn't see me add butter and seasoning but I did it. There you go, it's already getting brown the pieces, I'm taking some out already and to be honest with you I'll just give this a few more seconds and then it's time to get that in the pan with the rest of the other chicken and the vegetables. So there we go, in the big pot, get the rest of the chicken in, you can deglaze that pan if you like, just splash the water into it over a heat and just scratch off those bits, you can add those in the, in the pot in a minute. That was one litre of a white chicken stock and I will, I mentioned earlier putting in videos in the description, there'll be a video for making white stock as well. And that just wants to simmer for a while. I want a bit more colour, this is an absolute optional extra, I just really love a bit of bovril and that's just given a slightly richer dark brown colour. Gravy browning I believe is still available in some shops, can't say I've ever used it. Need to add a bit of thickening to this, I didn't coat anything with flour beforehand so this is corn flour, I'm sure you've all used it before. For this amount three teaspoons 
three heat teaspoons and you know just enough cold water cold emphasis on cold there to get it to form a what looks like milk really whack that in and it won't take long at all to thicken if you're not happy with it if you think it's a bit too thick then you can add a bit more stock or water if it's a bit too thin you can add a bit more corn flour so it's up to you after all that's where the parsley went in and this is where I cool this mixture down I get it into a bowl now what I'm doing is I want to serve gravy as well with this and that's why I've done quite a lot of gravy here because what I do here now is just borrow some of it so I'm taking four or five ladlefuls of the mixture which I'm going to throw back in but making sure I get quite a lot of the liquid So then the pastry, the filling and the gravy all went in the fridge overnight and the next day I made the pies. So this is the next day. I took the pastry out of the fridge for about an hour because it was absolutely rock solid. I'm making six individual pies. So this is my way of trying to get six equal pieces of pastry. I was just thinking there, can I get away with not using flour? And the answer was no, you need flour. If you want to be quite fancy about this, you can do this between two sheets of baking parchment. A lot of people do that, but I believe this would have still stuck to the parchment. So flour would have been necessary. I'm rolling this to about, I would say a quarter of a centimeter. I believe that would be about an eighth of an inch. That is quite thin. You'll see me there adding flour, but then brushing it off because I really don't want to have additional flour, just, just the bare minimum so that we can roll this without it sticking. And we're almost there, I would say now. There you go, just gonna to demonstrate to you the thickness. I think for some reason that might help you. And then I'm gonna get my Dario molds. So if you want to do individual ones, I recommend you buy these. I've got six of them, they're great. I considered pre-brushing them with a bit of butter or lard or just greasing them with oil to make it easier to get them out. I didn't, and I didn't need to, but again, that's an extra layer of security, so if you want to, you can lightly grease them before you put the pastry in. Obviously, I rolled a piece of pastry much larger than that, and then used my thumbs very delicately to try to encourage it to get into all of the the edges, or the corner, effectively. And then we've got a nice overlap, which I'm going to trim off, but I then decide that wasn't the best way of doing it, so the next one, I'll show you a slightly different way. So keep all these trimmings because we're going to use them to make the lids now just with my fingers and thumbs there, I'm just going to ease up the pastry so it's slightly proud maybe about half a centimeter or so above the rim so this is the next bit of pastry I rolled out not that well actually not particularly round but it'll do so what I do now is I'm offering that into the middle of it and I'm cutting it at least two inches, maybe slightly more, around the outside. That will give you less pastry to try to force into it and it is better that way. The more pastry you've got, the more it's likely to fold um, consortina as it goes in. Oh, there's a good word for me. Right then, again, with your thumbs, ease it in. And we still need we still will need to trim some off there like we do and then again each one ease it up about half a centimeter above the top of the rim lovely 
So, we're doing six of those. This is just one final shot, I think, for some reason in my mind, I think you can see what I'm doing a bit there, a bit better inside the Daria mould. But I think you've got the picture by now. So this is the odd bits, the trimmings, the offcuts. I'm needing a little bit of water to just get it back to being a proper dough consistency because it has had some flour in there. I'm going to roll those out in a minute, just showing you I'm, at this stage I'm filling the pies right almost to the very, very top, or pretty much to the top, and that mixture is cold. It is better to do this with cold. If you're working with a hot filling in the cold pastry, that pastry is going to start to melt. It's all going to go a bit peat tong, if you know what I mean. So that is quite important that when you're making these, you don't go, oh, I want chicken pie in five minutes. You've got to go, I'll have chicken pie tomorrow. I'll do the work today and I'll finish them tomorrow. So again, I divided up that mixture that was left over into six pieces, roll them out to approximately a quarter of a centimetre again. That is just a little bit of water. That's just to help to make the pastry stick to the pastry. Delicate touch required here. Don't squeeze this hard. Just try to press those two pieces of pastry together. You'll need to create a hole. That is so that steam can escape while they're cooking, otherwise they'll they'll puff up all the pastry and they look up. They'll look well. They look very homemade. So you you know if you want them to look particularly homemade, don't put a hole in it. I suppose. So now I'm going to trim this. What I do is I angle the knife slightly outward so you're not cutting off too much pastry because you need to leave about half centimeter again. So you've got a bit of dough there to crimp. Crimping will make it look nice, but also it makes it easier to get them out of. The moulds later because the pastry isn't stuck to the rim. So then I'm just making sure the pastry is pressed together perfectly. There we go. Forefinger and thumb of one hand, finger of the other. And that is crimping. Looks nice, doesn't it? Your pies a thorough egg washing. I've got a preheated oven to 180 degrees C, that's about 356 Fahrenheit. They'll take about 25 minutes. Now, the reason why I'm doing these is to commemorate St. George's Day, that is the patron saint of England. Although he wasn't English and he didn't slay any dragons, he was just an incredibly brave, I believe he was Roman, a Roman centurion who refused to convert away from his Christian. Christianity and he's an incredibly brave man and so I thought so let's pay homage to an incredibly brave man with my favorite pie chicken and gravy with mashed potatoes of course it's got to be mashed with pie it's pie and mash isn't it did it a bit fancy there in my new piping bag burnt my hand a little bit because the making <laughs> the mash was piping hot and you also, I gave the pie a good five minutes to cool down a little bit because it will be absolutely steaming in there. And the lashings of that gravy that we salvaged as well, that is looking gorgeous. I'm very happy. Going to eat some of it in front of you in a minute. But anyway, thank you ever so much for watching Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. You must subscribe. You must thumbs up, comment, share it. I'm also now, I'm on Instagram. I've got six people following me there. That's good. I'm on Cookpad, and I've got a little Facebook page as well. So you can have a look out for me on those platforms as well. Anyway, thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one coming soon. Bye.